All right, everyone. I'm at the Lake Wales National Park. It is 7.30 in the morning. I just drove two and a half hours to get here. And some of you might be asking, Zach, why did you wake up at 4.30 in the morning and drive two and a half hours to get to the middle of the state of Florida? That's because we're gonna find some really cool plants today. The plant we're searching for today is Sparenthes longilabris, which is a native terrestrial orchid in the genus Sparanthes, which means spiraled flowers. This particular Sparenthes, Sparenthes longilabris, has flowers that are not very much spiraled and have spreading petals, which easy to, makes it easily distinguishable from most other Sparanthes that we might encounter. It tends to flower mostly from November into December and maybe to the first part of January in this part of its range. Even though this has been known to occur in most of the southeastern states of the U.S. at one time or another, most states it's restricted to very few populations or even extirpated completely from some states in its historical range. We believe the stronghold of its occurrence that's left is central Florida. Rarely outside of this range do people find more than 10 or 20 or 30 plants in a site we are finding in the ecotones that we've been walking of this particular set of depression marshes and basin marshes, we're up to a couple thousand plants already and counting because we're still at this point surveying areas of them that haven't been surveyed before for this plant ever. It's, they're so abundant you can actually see them in the distance in the grass. Yep, there's one. Just uh, a few meters away. These started flowering here at about the last week of about the third week of November and so some plants are already fully in fruit whereas others are just now in early flower within the same within the same population so it seems to have some variation in the phenology of the plants which makes it easier to survey over a long period of time we're trying to compile a, a coverage of all the GPS points we can find for this species within this within this range of habitats so that we can in later years monitor whether or not we're getting a population increase or decrease. We need to get that first level of baseline data about where is the plant occurring so that we can monitor in the future uh, how changes in hydrology or changes in burn regime or changes in management might affect how many we're getting in a particular type, in a particular area versus another area. And if we do enough of those areas, we'll get enough replication, hopefully, that we'll be able to determine which factors are responsible for the increase or decrease. Okay. Yeah, there are a few of them. Ladies' see. tresses. One, two, three. Sometimes There's it's a fourth called one. the Thanksgiving ladies' tresses because it starts flowering around Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. And we're, near, it is. we're near the end of its flowering season now. You can see that the two lateral... Uh, petals spread out yep. from the lip. Most branches are going to be held closer to it. Oh, okay. And this also tends not to form a strong helix. Yeah, it very loosely it's coiled. or slightly spiral. Yep. Compared to other spiranthes. Compared to the spiranthes, which may make four or five revolutions in one inflorescence. Wow. Well. That's cool. The spiranthes got their name. They're called the spiral yeah. yep. flowers. So now we've walked ahead looking for more of them. Whole, the whole range was down to just a very few sites. Yep, there's another. Because, and you, can, you see one that I just passed there? Uh, yes? Where is it? Yep, there it is. I see it. So when they're past, past peak flowering, they're going to be a little more difficult to find. Sure. And so it's, um, no one, people were going out and not finding it in most of its range. But what has happened, I think, is because these habitats are not getting burned frequently enough and they're getting drained in most locations, the habitat is disappearing. Okay. And uh, it's become harder and harder to find large populations of it. Even though you could find an occasional one here and there, it's been more chance except for our systematic looking where we're finding much larger numbers uh -huh. by looking at the right habitat at the right time of year. 
If you came out here in November, in October, you'd see no trace of the plants. You'd, really? You'd okay. You have to be here at you a had, certain you'd time. You have to be down on the ground, and you had to find those linear, <laughs> yeah, yeah. linear basal leaves, which would be very difficult to find without an inflorescence. So it's true of many of these kinds of rare orchids. Uh huh. Is vegetatively, they may just blend in to the surroundings. Right. Basic so pattern of the plants in the wet in the wet prairie here, or wet grassland. The flags okay. indicate the individuals that we're GPSing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what? Part of our inventory of the species. Yeah. So what's Alex, what's Alex doing right now with, when we flag this? When we flag each individual plant, what's he going through and doing? Alex is taking submetric GPS points, and then I'm recording the number of plants at that point and their phenology. And then the, hab the microhabitat in which the plant occurs in. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of them.